most of the code that you will be writing during this course and also as a professional Python data scientist will be written in a Jupyter environment. Jupyter is an interactive uh, code environment. It will let you write code and get immediate feedback from it. So you don't have to follow the traditional process of writing it in a regular text file, executing Python and trying to understand what went wrong when something fails or getting partial results. So it's a it's the de facto, it's the most common and more popular most popular environment for data science in Python. It's also transcending the data science space. We actually, for example, use it a lot in our regular Python data science bootcamp for people getting started with programming. We give them a very good introduction to programming with Jupyter because again it's interactive. It has automatic like an immediate feedback that's going to give you an overview of how your code works and how it's being executed. Usually to get Jupyter installed, you have to just get a couple of tools, Anaconda, Miniconda, using pip, you have to use external tools and it gets a little bit complicated. So uh, we have actually, we're using a new online environment, which is called notebooks.ai and basically contains all the Jupyter environment online. It's like a Google Drive version of Jupyter Notebooks. And it also, one important feature is that it doesn't just include Jupyter Notebook, it also includes the new version, which is Jupyter Lab, which is what you're seeing right here. It's it's a it's um it's the evolution of regular Jupyter Notebooks, it's a complete data science environment and it's all available again online in notebooks.ai so this will be the service that we're using we're actually hosting all our code in here so anybody can fork it and work with it so just to give you an uh, an idea of how this thing works basically the idea of a Jupyter environment is that it will have these notebooks that I have just one here created. In this particular project, if you fork it, you're going to find this tutorial that has a lot of details. I will start here just in a blank one. And these notebooks are a set of multiple cells, as you can see here, in which you will be able to write code. So you can write code and interpret it and run it automatically or actually, sorry, immediately and get instant feedback about what's going on. This is all valid Python code, right? This is this isn't anything special. It's just re regular Python code, which is run, executed, and you get the feedback immediately about it. So, for example, if I define a variable x equals two, and I do x times three, this is all valid Python code. I can keep executing this, and the variable x is defined. So it's again all that you can expect about Python. We actually have a video about Python in the next section if you need a little refresher about it. So these cells can take two formats or they can actually take different modes. The default one is code mode, which again executes whenever you execute the cell, whenever you run it, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Whenever you run this cell, it's gonna run Python code. There is also a text-based mode, a rich text-based mode, which is markdown. So I can change the mode, here you're gonna read a markdown, and here you're gonna read code. Markdown code is not only text, so for example, if I do two plus two, this is text, but it's not just text, but also it's rich text. You can add titles, you can add images, you can use paragraphs, you can use pretty much whatever you want. So let me do these is our title. There you go. And actually you have a pretty good preview of all the rich features you can include here. So images, um, quotes, italics, bolds, links, it's all supported with the market markdown mode. What this will allow is for you to um, include this markdown, this rich text within your code. So your notebooks will be a combination of pretty like readable, beautiful markdown mode with uh, with documentation about your project, images, explanations, conclusions, and also of course, the, of course the code that you use to run. And all these notebooks, they can be exported into, for example, formats like PDF. So you can have a fully functional notebook which runs a report every day, right? combined with this beautiful markdown based code and you can export these notebooks once per day and have this report updated 
pretty much daily, right? Without any effort. Because again, it's a combination of text and your Python code. So um, this is a notebook. This is just a notebook. And it's what used to be the regular Jupyter Notebooks environment. As you can see here, this is a tiny notebook. Um, with this improvement of the lab, this is actually Jupyter Lab, the environment grew a little bit more powerful. And it's not just about a notebook, but it's also a full interface that gives you access of a regular machine working in the cloud. So right here, what I have is, uh, for example, I can launch a terminal. And this is a fully functional Python, uh, sorry, Linux machine running in the cloud. So I can install any packages that I need, I can do any reporting, logging, anything that I need to do, I can do it with this machine. Aside from that, it also gives you access to a file explorer. So these are the files of my project, right? And you can also access a very simple uh, just editor. So right here, I could create a Python file, I can rename it to something like utils.py. And I also have a regular just editor right here, dev hello world. It works as expected. So this is all part again of your Jupyter environment, Jupyter lab environment, we will focus of course, on notebooks, which are these special files that have a IPy NB the um, extension, which ex stands for IPython notebook, this used to be called IPython notebooks. So let's focus focus 100% on these notebooks. And I get, I'm going to get started with it. Whenever you start a notebook, it has what it's called a kernel running behind the scenes that it's executing your code. So it's like this robot that it's sitting behind the scenes and listening to your commands and running them with again, a fully functional Python, uh, just compiler. If you ever have issues with this kernel, you can always restart it here, you have a list of all the kernels that are running. So for example, here I have my variable x that it's running, I can shut down this kernel, the one of untitled.ipyme. And now if I try running x, nothing is happening because there is it says no kernel. So I can restart it. So I'm going to restart the kernel. Kernel has been restarted, I can sit here. And if I try running x again, it doesn't exist. Because again, the kernel has just been restarted, and I have lost all the previous state. So usually we try these notebooks to be kind of a sequential structure of all our code, we try to write it top down, so we can always replay it right from the top. It's also good to have some sort of a, like auto documentation, self documentation, you can read the process you that you're taking, right, and the code you have top to bottom, and you can understand the, the steps you took, and pretty much all the decisions you made if you keep a very, it's usually re uh, recommended, we recommend it to have a, a tidy notebook, an organized notebook top to bottom, right, in which you can just at any point, scroll up, and start reading all the processes or all the steps that you took. Okay, you bring someone else, a third person and just make them read your code and it should make sense top to bottom. So let's actually talk about these cells. This cells again can have multiple modes, we're going to focus in code first, uh, we, you saw the markdown, I encourage you to, for example, whenever you see markdown mode, like right here, if you double click and go to edit mode, you will be able to see what's the internal structure of the markdown. So this is where you include an image, um, you can include titles, etc. So we will not pay a lot of attention to markdown, we'll be focused, especially into code and the interaction with cells. So this is something important at the beginning, a cell can have or this notebook can have two important modes, command mode, which doesn't make a lot of sense. on now it doesn't tell you much. And also edit mode. The difference is that, as you can see, there is no cursor here. If I click inside the cell, you will see now that the cell becomes active, and the cursor, right, is present. What's the difference in command mode without the cursor? If I click, for example, my up and down arrow keys, I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to be moving across all these cells. If I'm in edit mode, and I have multiple lines, just let's make multiple lines here. If I, of course, hit the up and down arrow keys, I will be moving up and down. 
as you might be expecting. So that's the first thing. We have again an edit mode and a command mode. Usually we don't use a mouse with notebooks. We prefer to use the keyboard as much as possible. You can write all your code without using your mouse, using 100% your keyboard. It does take time to get used to the commands, but it's going to be a significant speed up of your uh, development workflow. So how can you transition from edit mode to command mode and back again to edit mode? Well, with the escape key and with the return key. So if I hit escape, I'm here in the edit, in the edit mode, the cursor is there. If I hit escape, I'm going to go back again to command mode. If I hit return or enter, I go back again to edit mode. So escape to go to command mode, return to go back again to edit mode. There are many more shortcuts and we will be discussing them, but just as a reminder or as, a, as an important note for you, there is this commands palette that is going to give you a summary of all the commands we're going to run and a reminder of the uh, shortcuts that you need, right? So for example, enter command mode, you can just follow the, the commands here. This max so it's a little bit weird. Um, you can always Google or edit mode is with enter. So I hit here, I just hit enter and I go back again to command mode. If I hit escape, I go back again to the command mode. So most of the commands that we will be running today are of course based of the command mode. So whenever I tell you, for example, we're gonna do, we're gonna see what's the command to create a new cell. So I have only one cell. How can I create a new cell? Well, I'm going to tell you the command, but you have to be in command mode to do it. All right. So always keep in mind that to run these commands, to modify cells, you have to be in command mode. So let's me, let me put something here. Hello world. There you go. And um, I'm going to show you how to create cells first with your keyboard. You can create cells with the plus button. This is pretty obvious. But I want to focus again on the keyboard so you can speed up your development workflow. How can you create a cell? Well, actually, you have to first define what position you want to give to that cell. All right. So let me actually create a new cell here. We're going to put x equals one and it's going to be a Python cell. So it's going to make a little bit more sense. So where do we want to place our cell? If I want to put it above the current one, if I want to create a new cell above, I'm going to hit the A key. So just hitting A here will create the cell above. I can create as many cells as I want. And as you can see, they're all created above. So let me delete them. I'm going to show you how to delete them later. What if I want to create a cell below? Well, I will hit the B key and I keep creating cells below the current one. How can I delete a cell? Well, once you have created one, you have to hit the D key, D from dice. You have to delete, uh, hit the delete key, the D key two times. So I do D, D and I delete the current cell. Usually, what I, as I'm saying right here, it's the current cell. So that is indicated by the current selected cell. So you can go up and down and select the one you want to delete. For example, this one. I'm going to go back to command mode. I'm going to hit the D key two times and this cell is deleted. What happens if you delete something or if you want to undo a certain action? In this case, I just realized that I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to delete that key. You can always undo your work with the Z key. I just hit Z and I get back again. I the the, the cell that I deleted. I get the previous action undone. So for example, if I create here uh, a new cell and if I, I hit Z, that cell is uncreated, basically it's destroyed. So Z is going to undo that command. You can also copy and paste cells. So you can, for example, here, I want to copy this cell and I want to paste it below. The commands to do that is first you will move to the selected cell and you will hit the C key from copy C. That's it. And then you're going to uh, position yourself, whatever you want to paste that 
um, cell and you're gonna just hit, hit sorry the V key so V from command V control V and you're gonna paste that new cell that you had and that is it these are the most common uh, commands that we need to man to manage to create delete etc our keys we're gonna see now how to run commands once we or execute cells because it doesn't have to be a command basically whenever you have a, uh, a key so let's uh, sorry a cell in this case gonna be a code cell you can execute this cell just by doing hitting the play button but again I want to show you I want to focus on the keyboard so if I want to execute this cell I have two different modes the first one is gonna execute the cell and the focus will remain on the current cell and to do that I will hit I will maintain press the control key and I'm gonna hit, and I'm gonna hit the return key so it's control return or control enter and again as you can see the code is executed but the focus stays on this same cell if I want to execute the code and move to the second cell what I'm gonna do is hit the shift key keep it pressed the shift key and hit the return key or the enter key so it's basically shift enter to run the code and move the focus to this next cell as you can see the focus is now here so we've seen how to manage our cells we have also seen how to um, run the code this code running process can also be applied to markdown cells so for example if I um, set this cell as markdown I create a title to actually compile if you want the markdown you can do the same thing control return or shift return and it's gonna shift the shift sorry the focus to the next cell you can change the mode of a cell with the Y key so I hit the Y key and I go from command sorry it's from markdown to code the Y key is gonna turn a cell into code the M key from markdown is gonna turn it into markdown so Y to code M to markdown you can transition you can cycle back and forth between these two again remember that these cells they or these um yeah these cells are always whenever you hit whenever you run a command they are pretty much sending the request to a hidden kernel that it's running behind the scenes right and the kernel will execute these commands you can always shut down the kernels and that, that will pretty much shut down and, and kill all your current status so if you have any cells or any code that you don't that is not preserved as a cell you will be losing it so be aware of that you can also interrupt the code as it's running as, as it's running in a Jupyter environment so right here what I'm gonna do is do is something like uh, for example I'm gonna do while true I'm gonna do here import slip the while and port time sorry while true um, print hello I'm gonna do time dot sleep one second or three seconds actually so I'm gonna get this thing running and as you can see the the code has this asterisk here or the cell has this asterisk here which means that the current cell is the cell is currently or it's still executing it's still running and it's locking our kernel I can't run any other cell right if I do two times two here that will not be a run because this one is holding on our current kernel it's blocking it so sometimes you need to stop these cells or to interrupt these cells one thing you can do is use this command that it's just to interrupt the kernel there you go and it's the same as doing control C with your keyboard and now this cell will be run or the shortcut the keyboard shortcut to interrupt the cell is hitting the I key from interrupt two times so I do I I and it sends a keyboard interrupt to the current cell so the kernel is again released 
The advantage of Jupyter Notebooks is that it will let you again combine um, not just regular uh, code from Python, but it will also be very useful, for example, for visualizations. So in this case, I'm gonna show you, this is just some code that we have in this tutorial, if you wanna follow, follow it. I'm gonna create a visualization that's displayed right within our notebook. Don't worry, we have an entire lesson about visualizations if you wanna check them later. This is just, again, remember, this is just an introduction to JupyterLab so you can understand how it works. So again, we also have a quick introduction to Python if you need a refresher. The rest, it's all about data science. The idea of this quick lesson was to show you how to use notebooks and for you to get familiar. Our recommendation here is to try to use the keyboard as much as possible. So if you don't remember the command, just go to the palette. It's gonna do something like run, right? Run selected cell, it's gonna tell you which command you have to use, for example, run selected cell, run selected cell and don't advance, advance, sorry, it's what we did here, the focus stays here, run selected cell, uninsert below is the shift one, shift enter, it moves the focus below, if there are no cells below, it will create a new one automatically. So again, this is a quick introduction, try to keep an eye on the keyboard, so you can um, free yourself from mouse and always use your keys. It's gonna give you a good advantage and, and it's gonna speed up your development process.